Have you ever failed miserably? I'd be surprised if you hadn't. Get your coffee. I think I sometimes take it for granted that I grew up in a church that faithfully taught through the whole of the Bible, such that I ended up thinking that everyone knows the truths revealed in the scriptures. But the fact is, the vast majority of people don't know much about the Bible, what it says, the stories that are there in it. So those stories that were familiar to me at fairly young age are almost entirely unknown to a lot of people. Take as an example a story near the end of the Gospel of John. The New Testament of the Bible opens with four accounts of Jesus's life and ministry, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And John closes with an exchange between Jesus and one of his closest followers, Peter. Now just prior to this, Peter had forsaken and denied Jesus, right at the moment that Jesus was being wickedly condemned to die. Under pressure, Peter denied Jesus three times after he swore that he would die with Jesus if it ever even came to that. And all of the disciples basically felt the same way. Now, Jesus had predicted that this would happen, that Peter would deny him three times. So it certainly didn't take Jesus by surprise when Peter did so. But Peter no doubt felt like an extreme failure. But the Gospel of John closes with an exchange between Peter and Jesus after Jesus had risen from the dead. Peter and Jesus and some of Jesus' other disciples were enjoying a meal by the Sea of Galilee when Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Remember, this is a question addressed to an individual that had utterly failed Jesus just before this. In a moment of pressure and stress, Peter failed. And now Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? And the word that Jesus uses for love is a word in Greek. This was originally written in Greek, which speaks of a deep sacrificial devotion. And even though Peter had previously thought that he loved Jesus in such a way that he would even die for Jesus or with Jesus, when tested, he failed. So Peter, when he was asked, Peter, do you love me with a deep sacrificial devotion, answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you like a brother. Literally, that's, that's what he said. To which Jesus responded, Peter, feed my lambs. Now, obviously, when he said this, he was speaking metaphorically about his followers, his people. And then a second time, Jesus asked Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, Peter, do you love me with a deep sacrificial devotion? And a second time, Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you like a brother. And a second time, Jesus said, tend my sheep. And then a third time, Jesus asked Peter, Simon, do you love me? And this time, the third time, Jesus shifted from asking Peter, do you love me with a self-sacrificial devotion to do you love me like a brother? He used the same word in Greek that Peter had used to say, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Now, there are maybe several ways that you could read what Jesus asks Peter this third time. Was the tone, Peter, do you even really love me like a brother? Or maybe it was more compassionately, Peter, do you have brotherly love for me? Whatever the tone, it, it had to kind of hit Peter in the gut. Jesus was questioning Peter's statement a third time. Remember, not long before this, Peter had been asked three times, aren't you one of his followers? And three times he had sworn off his connection to Jesus. So now when Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me with brotherly love? Peter responded, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you with brotherly love. And then a third time, Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Every one of us fail. Each of us aim at targets and we repeatedly miss, just like Peter. But Jesus met Peter 
where he was at and said, even if you fail, I have something for you to do. And then more than three decades later, after that seaside conversation, after Peter had faithfully fed and tended the followers of God, the flock of Jesus, Peter writes to a group of Christian leaders, no doubt recalling that conversation with Jesus, and he says this, The elders who are among you I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you. Shepherd the flock of God. He was absolutely recalling that conversation with Jesus. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers. Not by compulsion, but willingly. Not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. The crown of glory that does not fade away isn't for the perfect followers of Jesus. It's for those that remain faithful, even when they fail. So, get up. Keep going. There's a lot of work to do. See you next time.